In today's video, we are going to see how to make payments using UPI through your Android application. I've made a sample Android application to show you how this works. You can get the source code by clicking the link in the description below. I have one activity in which I have four edit texts and a button. The first edit text takes the amount to be transferred. The second edit text takes in the UPI ID to which the amount is transferred to. The third edit text is the name of the person and the fourth edit text is a note or a description of the payment. The button is to initiate the payment. I've given them all IDs so that they can be accessed in the Java file. Let's move on to the Java part of it and see how the payment is actually done. I've created a function called initialize views to initialize the four edit texts and the button. Next, we're going to set an on-click listener for the send button. Here, we're going to get the values from all the edit texts and send it to a function called pay using UPI. In this function, we're going to pass all the data that we've just passed in into a URI. We're going to do this using the URI class, URI.parse, the base URL, which is UPI colon slash slash pay dot build upon dot append query parameter. This is where we'll be passing in the parameter name and its value. PA is for the UPI ID of the person you're transferring it to. PN is for the name. TN is the note that will be attached with the transaction. AM is for the amount and CU is the currency. We call the dot build function on this. Now we're going to build an intent. Intent UPI pay intent. That's what I'm calling it in this application is equal to new intent and we pass in intent.actionView. We're going to pass in the URI as data to this intent. This will be done using the setData function. Now, we're going to list out the applications on the user's phone that are capable of making a UPI transaction. We're going to do this using a chooser. Intent.createChooser. The first parameter is going to be the intent that we just created, UPI pay intent. And the second parameter is going to be the title of the chooser. In our case, pay with. Next, we're going to check if the user actually has an application that is capable of making a UPI transaction. If not, we're going to show a toast saying, no UPI app found, please install one to continue. We're going to do this by using the resolve activity method chooser.resolve activity and we're going to pass in get package manager. If this passes null, that means no application is found and we display a toast. If not, we're going to start the activity that the user had chosen from the list of applications that we had displayed. We're going to do this using the start activity for result method. The user is now in a different UPI application. When the user returns to our application, we need to know if the user has completed the transaction or what exactly happened. This we can find out in the onActivityResult method. In the onActivityResult method, we get three parameters, the request code, result code and data. These three parameters help us determine what exactly the user did in the other application. The request code is the code that we use to start the application. In our case, it's a constant called UPI payment. We've declared this globally as zero. Data contains a few parameters, one of which is response. We extract this response to find out exactly what the user did in the other application. If data is not equal to null, we extract the response from the data using data.getString extra and passing response as the parameter. We then create an array list called data list and pass the string to it. In case the data is null or the result code is one of the codes that we do not desire, we add a string called nothing to the data list. This indicates that the transaction did not take place. We pass this array list to the function UPI payment data operation to see exactly what happened. The first thing that we check in this function is if the internet connection is available. If it's not, we display a toast saying the same. I've written a function called isConnectionAvailable, which uses the Connectivity Manager class to check if the internet is available or not. It returns true or false accordingly. Next, we take the string present at the zeroth position of the array list passed and put it in a string called str. 
This string is what the UPI app returns. I've logged it to show you exactly how it looks. It contains four parameters, primarily transaction ID, response code, status, and transaction reference. If any one of these parameters is empty, there was either an error or the payment was cancelled by the user. To determine this, we first split the string using ampersand, which gives us the parameters in a string array. We again split the values of this string array with equal to to get the values separately. As I said, if any one of these values is not present, payment is cancelled by the user. If status parameter contains success, that means the transaction was successful. Based on these findings, I've displayed a toast saying what happened. You can add your app specific logic instead of this. That's about it. Let's run the application and see how it works. As you can see, when I enter the details and click on the button, the chooser with all the applications that are capable of making a UPI payment pop up. On selecting any one of them, it opens the transaction page with the details already filled out. On proceeding and completing the transaction, the control is given back to our application where we process the data and say it is a success. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe for more on point videos just like this one.